Section 2.4, Truth Tables, Conditional and Biconditional Statements, Video 1. In this video, we will cover the following objective. Construct truth tables with two simple statements that include conditional statements. Recall that an if-then statement is called a conditional statement. If written in if-then form, the first part of the statement is called the antecedent, and the second part of the statement is called the consequent. In logic, the statement if p then q is represented p arrow q. In this video, our main objective will be to create a truth table for conditional statements. And we will start with an example to see how this basic truth table can be created. Suppose a boss promises her workers that if they work overtime today, then they can have tomorrow off. In what case would this promise be broken? First, let's represent this conditional statement symbolically. Notice that it is an if-then statement. So if they work overtime today, then they can have tomorrow off. We will let P stand for they wake, work overtime today. And Q represent they can have tomorrow off. Thus, the statement, if they work overtime today, then they can have tomorrow off, can be represented P arrow Q. And that would be this entire statement there. So there are four different cases to consider. The first case is they work overtime today and they end up having tomorrow off. In this case, the promise was not broken. And so the conditional statement, if P then Q, or in other words, if they work overtime today, then they can have tomorrow off, is true. So in this case, the promise is not broken. The conditional statement P arrow Q is true. Case two, they work overtime today and don't end up having tomorrow off. In this case, the promise P arrow Q, or in other words, if they work overtime today, then they can have tomorrow off, is broken. And the conditional statement is false. Case three, they don't work overtime today and they end up having tomorrow off. Now, in this conditional statement, the workers are, are only promised something if they work overtime today. Nothing was ever promised if they don't work overtime today. And so in this case, the promise is not broken. And therefore, the conditional statement is true. Case four, they don't work overtime today and don't end up having tomorrow off. Again, in, in our the, the original conditional statement, they are only promised something if they work overtime today. They are not promised anything if they don't work overtime today. And so therefore, the promise is technically not broken here in this case. And so therefore, the conditional statement is true. By examining these four cases, the promise was broken only in the case in which the antecedent was true. So they work overtime today. And the consequent is false. They 
don't end up having tomorrow off. So the, the antecedent P ended up being true here, and the consequent Q ended up being false. And that is the only case in which the conditional statement P arrow Q ended up being false. In other words, that is when the promise was broken. And so this information can be summarized in a truth table. And so this is a truth table for conditional statements. We have our different, um, different combinations of P and Q. So we have the case where P and Q are both true. That's the first row here. And um, in that case, remember the promise was not broken. Then we have the case where the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And remember, that goes along with case two. That's when the promise was broken and the conditional statement was false overall. We have the case where the antecedent P is false and the consequent Q is true. In that case, the promise wasn't broken and the conditional statement was true. That goes along with case three. And then lastly, P and Q might both be false. And in that case, the conditional statement was true. That went along with case four. So we can match these rows up with the four cases that we um, discussed above here. And again, notice that the only time that this conditional statement comes out false is if the antecedent is true but the consequent is false. Let's practice with an example. Given the statements P and Q, create truth tables for P, if P, then not Q, and if not Q, then P. So let's start with if P, then not Q. We're gonna begin our truth table with the letters P and Q. And we're always going to label these columns the same way, just for consistency, so that we'll be able to compare them later. We have true, true, false, false, and then here we have alternating true, false, true, false. That ensures that every combination of true and false for P and Q are represented. All right, now we're going to need a column for the negation of Q which means that I'm going to take the opposite truth value for Q. So if Q is true, then the negation is false. If Q is false, then the negation is true. All right, and then lastly, we're going to have a column. We have a lot of room here. If P, then not Q. So we have if P, then not Q. Sometimes I like to write the words there so that I can keep track of the order in which I'm working. So recall that if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, which is what I have here, that is the only case in which the conditional statement will come out false. Here I have the antecedent is true and the consequent is true, so that's true. Here I have the antecedent is false and the consequent is false. That's true. And here we have the antecedent is false and the consequent is true. That is also true. So again, we're looking for the scenario or the case where the um, antecedent is true. So the quote unquote if part is true. And the consequent, the quote unquote then part, is false. That is when the conditional statement comes out to be false. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's make a truth table for if not Q, then P. So we're going to start these truth, this truth table the same way. We're going to have the same first three columns.
And now we're looking if, if at if not Q, then P. So now the not Q is the antecedent and the P is the consequent. So we have to make sure that we're going in that direction. So the antecedent is false to start with and the consequent is true. That's That means that the conditional statement is true in that case. Okay, next we have the antecedent being true and the consequent also being true. The conditional statement is true in that case. Then we have the antecedent being false and the consequent being false. The conditional statement is true in that case. And then lastly, we have the antecedent being true, the quote unquote if part, and the consequent being false, the quote unquote then part. That is the case, the only case in which the conditional statement ends up being false. Notice that these truth values, if I compare the truth values in these tables, notice that they did not come out the same. This shows me that order matters when determining the truth value of a conditional statement. And that if we switch the antecedent and the consequent, then the truth values will not um, necessarily end up being the same. So in other words, order matters. This concludes example one.